question I'd wondered, and it's also a bit of a self-reflective question because, you know, in my in my own writing, I think of myself as intervening in the public debate in South Africa in service of rescuing class from the cultural tone, which is the title of of one of your catalyst essays from which a lot of the book's arguments are drawn. And the question I, I had in mind throughout reading it is, to whom is the book addressed? So when we think about the places where this culturalist zeitgeist predominates, it's largely in the academy and throughout the left intelligentsia. And often these are the people I'm also in dialogue with, but sometimes I often wonder to myself, uh, do they really matter in the sense that the the constituency that matters for the kind of politics uh, that the left and particularly the Marxist left wants to build is the working class. And the working class doesn't need convincing about the primacy of, of class position in constraining one's interests and agency since they're sufficiently persuaded by the dull economic, the dull compulsion of economic relations, which is the, the quote from Marx that you you peppered the book with. So I guess, yeah, the question I had in mind in, in thinking about uh, to whom this book is addressed is, is in a way, does the sort of persistence of these debates um, and the very kind of the cultural tone itself, is, is that something that is responsible for the growing chasm between the, the left in, in scare quotes and the working class? Or, or is it a symptom um, and an expression of, of the, the disconnection from, uh, of the left and, and the working class? That's a great question. My belief is that it's a symptom of the chasm and not a cause of the mm. chasm. Um, and if, so let me explain what, what I mean by that. It's a symptom of the chasm because if the left, th there's a reason why the cultural turn really takes hold in the era of the left's defeat. And in the era of the retreat of the labor movement and the socialist parties and the communist parties, the reason is the reason that connection is there is that as long as the left was a part of the working class movement, and as long as left intellectuals were either directly involved in organizing or disciplined by a culture of working class organizing, then the daily grind and reality of the dull compulsion of economic relations was something that intellectuals also encountered, if not directly, mm -hmm. then indirectly through the organizations of which they were a part. Therefore, the idea that class is a cultural construct, that the world is a cultural construction, was just inconceivable in that left culture. And but maybe later we'll come to this. The notion that Gramsci, for example, was a cultural theorist of this sort is, I think, <laughs> really dubious because there he is at, after having organized the workers councils and the trade unions in Italy and rotting away in a fascist prison being at the receiving end of a class defeat he's not going to wonder if class is real or not mm. none of that generation believed in this the reason that it happens later is that as the the organic connection between intellectuals left intellectuals and the working class is severed intellectuals become housed in universities and professional settings which does two things it first of all it removes them from the daily grind of class struggle and that affects their consciousness and their understanding of the world secondly it puts them in an incentive structure where let's face it nobody who's making six-figure salaries in an american university wants to hear about the brute realities of class struggle mm. and then reward you for it it's not the world that they inhabit there's a very strong incentive structure in, a, in the academy to a not be a radical at all and if you're going to be a radical to refashion it so that the old challenges to the system like marxism seem mm, simple-minded misconceived dull-headed and you move towards a con conception of the system which is consistent with the class position and the class experiences of intellectuals mm. so once marxism or class theory becomes taken over by this stratum of the middle class, which is severed from working class struggles, of course now its consciousness and its theorizing starts to change. That mm. being the case, the cultural turn is a symptom and not a cause of this separation between workers and the intelligentsia. Now that brings up your, the second part of your question, why worry about it then? 
Well, the reason you worry about it is that twofold. One is in the world that we inhabit today, among your generation, even amongst mine, there has been a catastrophic collapse of confidence among Marxists. Because they haven't won anything in 50 years, mm. they really don't see their theory helping to change the world. Mm. And because they have not had the training and the, the, the transmission of the history of socialist struggles that had been passed on from generation to generation from, say, the 1870s to the 1940s. There's a missing generation of Marxists now. They don't know the history of their own movement. They get it from their professors who are quite hostile to that movement. So they believe things like Marxists never took race seriously. Marxists never took culture seriously. Marxists never took identity and oppression seriously. They've been these dim-witted, dull-headed, <laughs> one-issue, economistic, you know, uh, uh, troglodytes. So when you see a Marxist today, chances are they'll be in the academy because outside the academy, the movement's been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And within the academy, they believe a lot of this crap that their professors have told them. And so the, what a book like this is intended to do is to, at the very least, set the record straight on two things. What is the history of the Marxist movement? And secondly, this is the funny part, it's telling Marxists, here's what your theory actually implies. Mm. You haven't thought hard enough about your theory. And that's not just for my generation and yours. It was true of Stuart Hall. It was true of E.P. Thompson. They did not fully comprehend the implications of their own theory. The implications of their own theory were that the stability of capitalism doesn't come from culture. It comes from the properties of the class structure itself. In fact, we'll come to this later. They reversed the causal connection. They were right in that culture does mediate class formation, mm. but they thought culture in inhibits it. Actually, as I argue in the book, culture is one of the things that helps cement class formation. Mm. What inhibits class formation is the properties of the class structure itself, the material properties. What the book is trying to do, therefore, is to press socialists and Marxists to do two things. First, understand their theory isn't the dim-witted, dull-headed, economistic, reductive theory that their critics make it out to be. So have some confidence in your theory is a reason it worked for 100 years. And secondly, to try to then also sh show that the, the line of argument extending from the 50s into the 80s, which pushed materialism aside, is profoundly flawed and try to give reasons as to why it's flawed so that whatever confidence we have as socialists doesn't come from cheerleading or indoctrination, but from a cool, calm confident confidence in the properties of the theory itself. That is going to be confined to the academy, as you said. Mm. But sadly, this is where socialists are right now. It's in the mm. professional class. And right now in that class, there is some initial process of clarification and education that needs to happen for the left to be uh, to gain strength. 